Welcome back to NH Unscripted, where Mama says you can't hurry, hurry, love. Yeah, we just take our time here, oozing, easing, smoozing. I am your Supremes like host, Ray Dudley. We are coming to you from the Car 54 like digs of the WKXL Studios in Concord. You know the drills. Break out those transistor radios. Put your earplugs in. You're going to want to try to find us on 1450 AM, 103.9 FM for the people in Manchester and 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester. And yeah, yeah, we got a URL where all the cool kids hang out. It's nhtalkradio.com. You can listen to us live and I'll give you a little bit more information about that website later. I need to thank my sponsor, Lakes Region Fence. Uh, Matt and his crew up there do incredible, incredible work. I've been on their job sites. I've seen a lot of what they do firsthand. And I'm telling you, they do exemplary stuff. They are a full-service fence company. They're located up there in the Lakes Region uh, area. It's in Guilford. They have a uh, website, lrfence.com. LRFence.com stands for Lakes Region Fence. How would you guess that? You can go out there. You can get a quote. Actually, there's a button. You press it. Matt will get an email with a request saying you want some information about fencing. And they do it all. It's a free quote. They do sports courts. They do property lines. They do pool fences. They do. I think they still do dog runs. I think they do. I'll talk to Matt about that. But anyway, you see that fence you got that's fallen down? Yeah, get rid of it. It's time to belly up, boy. Belly up. Get the bucks out. Uh, this is an interesting time as well because we're heading towards the end of the season and they are very busy out there. So check them out, lrfence.com, lrfence.com. Matt and those guys, we thank you so much for all you do for us here. Well... Well, speaking of that time of the year, we are about to endeavor talking about film, and film in particular, films, plural. We will be speaking with Tina Sautel, the music director, a music hall executive director out there in Portsmouth. Good morning, Tina. Good morning. We are going to be talking about the New Hampshire Film Festival, is that correct? That is correct. I'm thrilled to be here to share with you a lot of exciting news and updates of what's going to be happening this year. It's unbelievable what takes place out there at this time of the year. I've been out there several times. It is, it's an experience. It's an event. Um, Tina, before we go too far, I do have a little blurb here. Let me read it for folks. Um, this year, the nonprofit music hall has taken over the reins of the festival says Executive Director Tina Sautel. We are carrying forward the tradition that has made this event such an important and beloved part of Portsmouth's cultural identity. Since its founding in 2001, the New Hampshire Film Festival has grown into one of New England's most highly anticipated events. I could go on and on, and I will in a little while, but Tina, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, having taken over the festival and what it means to you guys? Oh, I'd love to do that. Um, yeah, so the, the Music Hall has been um, an, an anchor screening venue uh, for the New Hampshire Film Festival since its existence, uh, so it's always been uh, a part of it, um, but the festival has been, was, was operated by a group of volunteers uh, for over 20 years, and it's amazing what they have built um, in the last two decades, led by uh, Nicole Gregg. Um, uh, with, uh, I think, a lot of support from her uh, husband, Zach Gregg, also uh, co-founded uh, with uh, Dan Hannon, who has been uh, right there involved with the, with the film festival for 20 years. I think it, it came to a point in time where they said it's, it's, they've grown it, they've built it to something that is pretty substantial, um, but the festival was ready to move into an organization with just more resources, more paid professional staff, uh, to do a lot more of the advanced planning work uh, to, to help uh, sustain the festival, but to see where we could grow the festival in terms of you know greater audience attendance uh, and further engagement with the film industry and that sort of thing. Um, the music hall has been you know in existence since 1986 uh, as its own nonprofit organization. 
film uh, programming is is a critical part of our, our programming. We do year-round um, screenings of independent films. We've always been very proud of that, and our community um, absolutely uh, loves to see that part of as part of our programming mix. And we, we bring a number of um, uh, a variety of film events uh, to the theater throughout the year, um, a lot of outdoor film programming. Um, we we uh, bring Telluride um, Film Festival um, uh, screenings to, to our venue as well in September. But this, taking over a, a four-day festival is a whole new endeavor for, for the music hall. Um, and we saw this as a gift coming from Nicole Gregg and the, the festival veterans, uh, gi- giving us something that is very well established, truly beloved by the community and by the filmmakers who have attended uh, the, the festival in years past. And to be given this opportunity to, to manage it going forward um, while still being guided by many of the festival veterans, Nicole included, uh, where she'll, she's staying on as founding director in more uh, of an advisory and consulting role, um, we are just honored to be carrying forward this this uh, festival and this what's become a tradition for so many in in October for for our community and region. Yeah, but first of all, I cannot imagine the logistical nightmare of trying to put it together. Um, it's a lot of work. Oh, that's an <laughs> understatement. I mean, if you've ever been out to it. You, it's crazy that there's venues everywhere. There's something happening every every 15 right. minutes in some cases or 20 minutes. Um, it's really crazy what's happening out there. Before we get into the particulars, um, why don't you give us some information, some contact information, how people can get some tickets, the website, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So this year's festival, um, like most most festivals in the past, it always runs in the, the third weekend in October. And so those dates this year are October 17th through the 20th, 20th, that's Thursday through Sunday. Um, and the best uh, place to, to, to get, gain it, uh, information on the festival is, is our website, nhfilmfestival.com. Everything's there in terms of buying passes. We already have our schedule posted for this year's festival, which we are really um, proud to be able to bring forward that timing improvement um, for everybody in in the community, the filmmakers, to be able to promote that their films have been selected and whatnot. So you can see all that content there, as well as some of the um, panels, special events, and uh, workshops that I'm really excited to talk to you about today. Yeah. So we can get into some more specifics there. I am I am fired it up. I have the schedule on the website right now. Um, and it's ju- it just scrolls. You scroll and scroll and scroll. There's so <laughs> much going on. I mean, it's crazy. Not to mention some special guests that um, I know you want to talk about in a minute. Um, w- when people are there, packages or, or um, how do I put this, uh, ticket how to, passes that are more yeah. are more popular than others. Yeah, the the most popular pass right now that we're thrilled to see um, selling so well is um, a New Hampshire resident pass that we introduced uh, this year. So we basically took the four day festival pass uh, at the VIP level, and we said, "Hey, if you if you're a resident of the state of New Hampshire." Let's give give our um, our, our residents a, a discount uh, and give them the incentive and advantage to uh, considering that four day pass. It gets you access to everything that we're doing, including um, the parties, the, the special events. Um, it is such a steal, honestly. When you look at what uh, numbers of film and events and uh, the hospitality parties that you can go to. Um, that have food provided at them. It truly is a steal. We've we've looked at other festivals and how they price things and how they package things. So we we know we are bringing um, tremendous value uh, to to our New Hampshire um, state residents. So I would definitely draw people's attention to that. 
But, you know, if, if folks aren't interested in a full four-day commitment, there's also day passes people can, can buy. And Thursday is, is the, the best deal for everybody. The Thursday day pass is just $30. And that gets you access to everything that's happening on Thursday, which happens to be New Hampshire Day for the festival. Tina, hang on. Ooh, that's a cliffhanger. I want to come back to that. You've been listening or are listening to NH Unscripted. I am your happy to be out of bed host, Ray Dudley. I'm talking with Tina Sautel from the uh, Music Hall. She's the executive director there. We're talking about the New Hampshire Film Festival. We'll be right back after we pay a few bills. Morning, America. How are you? You are listening to NH Unscripted, and we are having ourselves one heck of a time. I am your Arlo Guffy like host, Ray Dudley. We are coming to you from the not so overly ostentatious digs of the WKXL studios, deep, deep, deep in the heart of Concord, where you can find us at 1450 AM, 103.9 FM. Yep. Those are Concord based 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester and nhtalkradio.com is the special URL where all the cool kids are. Yep, yep, yep. In, well, I was going to say in studio, but on the phone with me is Tina Sautel. She's the Music Hall Executive Director out there in Portsmouth, and we are talking about the New Hampshire Film Festival. Uh, Tina, I did say that. Your website is incredibly easy to navigate. I mean, it's it's very well laid out. We love to hear that. <laughs> did, I mean, there's nothing that you can't find. Uh, did you say it's only thirty dollars for a Thursday pass? Yeah. So Thursday is traditionally been New Hampshire Day, and we're maintaining that uh, as part of the festival. Um, what's so special about that day is. Uh, our curating team, uh, as they're sifting through literally 1,800 film submissions, no joke, 1,800, um, they look for those that have been identified as having a connection to New Hampshire, whether the director's from New Hampshire or it's filmed in New Hampshire or the stories about something going on in New Hampshire. Um, we, we take a, a, a special look at those film submissions and say, how can we fit them in to, to Thursday to highlight um, creative work that are having some connection to, to the state? So the Thursday day pass for, for that day, yes, is $30. And then it clicks up Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Again, if this is just a, a day commitment uh, you can make, it goes to $50 on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But I, I can't emphasize enough how much the festival pass is just a killer deal for people who want to do a multi-day commitment and support the film festival. Because yeah. um, it, re- it really helps us go a long way with those uh, getting those full festival pass buyers. You know, and not just that, but when you look at that schedule uh, on Thursday, you don't have to roam very far. I mean, it's not like no. not like the other days where you got to go to 3S or, or or the press room or something to just to see. So you're traveling the city all day. This is you can spend all day at the music hall. Yeah, that is the that is the the real nice part of Thursday. It's primarily focused between our two uh, key venues, the historic theater on on 28 Chestnut Street, and then right across the street is our smaller venue, uh, the music hall lounge. We do have um, some activities happening across town over at Moffat Ladd House. But, you know, in total, Ray, we have over five screening venues this year, which we're thrilled to, to be bringing, uh, increasing the number of screening venues. Um, and we're so happy to have so many uh, organizations partnering with us once again on this year's festival. You mentioned 3S Art Space. They're dear friends uh, of ours, uh, as well as the Press Room. Um, and then we're, we brought in St. John's Church as a screening venue um, oh, this year that. because we have so many films we need to to get into this schedule. Uh, we needed to add in that additional uh, screening venue. Yeah, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I volunteered a few years back 
and was a presenter. And um, my little legs, <laughs> trying to get from one <laughs> from one venue to the other. <laughs> Yeah. You get your steps in. That's I for sure. did. I did. But it was a blast. I mean, th- because and each of those little venues are, are so different. And they 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 have their own little unique uh, flavor to them. And so it was so great to go from one to the other to the other to the other and, and see. But first of all, they're all packed. They're always mm-hmm. – there's, there's no empty seats. By the time you get there, the place is packed. So – if you do want to get a pass, you got to do it early. Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it was really a great thing. Are there, I want to talk to you about um, the way that they're broken down. Uh, if you go to like the festival schedule, there yeah. are like four categories there's right. feature narrative, feature documentary, then there's short block and special events. Now, I think the documentaries kind of speak for themselves as far as what that category is. But Mm -hmm. could you elaborate a bit on what short block and then special events are? Yeah. So one of the things that uh, we're excited to share with folks that that aren't familiar with this is that the New Hampshire Film Festival is a qualifying festival for the Academy Awards, specifically for short Films. And so shorts are defined, um, I guess, from a technical standpoint from the Academy as anything that is under 20 minutes. So it's really about the length uh, of the film. So anything uh, generally that's 40 minutes or longer or so uh, gets, gets bucketed in the feature length category. And so you've got your, your obviously your feature length documentaries, your narratives you know, which are um, telling, you know, stories of, of you know, that have, that have been uh, written in, by screenplay uh, writers. Um, the shorts are what are so interesting about um, the New Hampshire Film Festival in that they can range from a 50-second uh, film that's been created all the way up to a 20-minute film. And so how we package those for the festival schedules, we put them into blocks. Um, and our curating team, uh, led by uh, uh, Ian McCarthy and Mark Pruitt, uh, all of that effort um, is done by those two individuals uh, with a team of uh, small team of screening uh, volunteers. But it's really Ian and Mark who have constructed um, these uh, short blocks, and it's just about timing and what really fits well together um, in being packaged from one block. To the next, but it it makes the festival um, it, it brings so much variety to the patrons, and that they can be sitting down for about an hour, and you can be seeing six different pieces of, of creative work. I was and, just going to say that. Yes, it's crazy. Yeah, and the the range you know go, goes from animation to live action to documentaries to to narrative. So you're you're going to be seeing kind of the full the full gamut of uh, what uh, independent filmmakers are, are creating today, but in such, you know, bite-sized chunks that um, we get a, a lot of positive feedback from patrons that it's one of the things they love most about the New Hampshire Film Festival is the short content coming out of the short block. And I'll tell you again, um, it, for people who get the Thursday pass, it's loaded with short blocks. It sure is. It's yeah. packed. I mean, you'll see dozens, literally dozens of films in one day. In one day. You got it. And we do repeat, you know, a number of the blocks throughout the, the weekend. You know, so if you study the the um, the festival schedule online and you're like, oh, how, I want to be able to see this, but I'm not going to be able to make it because I have to make choices for to go see maybe a featured length film. Um, that's the benefit of, of signing up for the full weekend is that we do screen uh, certain selections uh, multiple times. There are some um, events which take place that are highlighted on the website, on the schedule website. Um, I don't, there's a couple that I don't want to get into just yet, but could you talk a little bit about the events themselves, like what some of them are uh, without giving away too much yet? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, uh, for a film festival, you want to be bringing in content for your filmmakers. Uh, you want to be creating a, a professional networking atmosphere for them uh, where they can have conversations 
together, but then we can open it up to the general public as well to be um, who, those that are curious or interested about what what goes you know on behind the camera in in the filmmaking world. Um, so when we construct our panels and our workshops, first and foremost, we're thinking about what is relevant uh, to to the, to the filmmaking uh, community, and in. In other cases, we've also tried to uh, focus on some, some key topics that we think are important uh, for our state, but also for young aspiring filmmakers, uh, such as high school students and, and college students who are considering a career uh, in the film industry. So that's what you'll see in the makeup of this year's panels uh, and workshops. And any of them that you'd like me to speak about, I'm happy to do so, Ray, to, to get into more specifics. Well, I was just astounded. I mean, the very first one is is called Working on Productions in New England. And, mm-hmm. and you right. click on it, and it looks like the people who are there, uh, they have worked on, like, Spider-Man, The Holdovers, The Boston Strangler. Oh, my gosh. You hear that music, Tina? There we are. I hear it. Stuck right there. Hang on, everybody. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I'm so glad I got out of bed. You are listening to NH Unscripted. And like I said, I am your happy-to-be-out-of-bed host, Ray Dudley. We have to take a break. Tina Sautel from the uh, Music Hall, the executive director over there, is with me. We're talking about the New Hampshire Film Festival. You are listening to us, hopefully, on 1450 AM, 103.9 FM in Concord, 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester, or maybe you press the button out there at nhtalkradio.com. Who knows? We'll be right back. Back to NH Unscripted. I'm telling you, I'm almost having an aneurysm. I'm so excited here. You are listening to NH Unscripted on 1450 AM 103.9 FM for the people and the beautiful listeners in Concord. 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL. I am Ray Dudley, your host. I am the one wearing the Nehru jacket and the bell-bottom pants. Yeah, I got my platform shoes off right now, but... Hey, what can I say? Tina Sautel, the executive director over at the Music Hall in Portsmouth, is on the phone, and we are talking to New Hampshire Fest Film Festival. Tina, you have some special people that might show up. Is that true? We sure do. Yeah, we're, we're excited to um, introduce uh, a, a new special event into to this year's festival, um, bringing uh, some attention to uh, the uh, let's see, uh, actors, actresses who have had, you know, true accomplishments in, in their career. And we were so thrilled to be able to secure uh, for the festival this year, Alan Ruck. You would, you, if you were a Fer- Ferris Bueller's Day Off fan, you will remember Alan uh, uh, cast in the role as, as Cam. Yep. Um, a Ferris's beloved best friend. Um, and then more recently... Alan is widely known uh, for being cast in the role of Connor in the HBO award-winning series, Secession. Yes, we so, have to say uh, that because there are some folks who weren't even born yet when, <laughs> when <laughs> Ferris Bueller was around. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But I'll say, if you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that is a classic film. It's a must-see. Uh, so Alan's going to be on stage uh, at the Historic Theater kicking off the Friday night uh, uh, festivities at 4 o'clock. So what we're, we're trying to do this year is bring in like a keynote speaker uh, type of event to, to bring in uh, some of the stars, you know, from, from Hollywood and, and from the big New York film scene and to have conversations with them on stage and then uh, have a VIP meet and greet opportunity uh, with those celebrities. And Alan is, is really excited to be here. We've been working with his team on his arrival and how long he might stay throughout the, the festival. So we, we expect he'll be here for a good chunk of time. Um, but, you know, that really kicks off the, the Friday night 
uh, uh, vibe of like that the red carpet event that we have later after Alan's uh, Q and A on stage, uh, and then we go into one of our, our featured films, which is um, uh, starring Amy Adams this year. Uh, and the film's name is called Night Bitch, and so that's gotten a lot of uh, uh, notoriety around a number of other film festivals that it's been premiered at. So. Friday night's going to continue to be one of the more exciting uh, evenings in the New Hampshire Film Festival's weekend of events. Man, oh man. I mean, it's packed. That is an understatement, by the way. This thing is loaded. Um, I, I wanted to just, I know we have someone else we want to talk about real quickly, but um, for the, can you talk about the VIP passes and what's involved with those, what, what people are going to get if they decide they might want a VIP pass? Yeah. You know, and the, the thing I haven't emphasized yet about the VIP passes is that you get entrance into all of the screenings yeah. and all of the yeah. panel workshops before anybody else. So in, you know, in fairly typical festival style here, these are, there's no assigned seating, right? Um, the only pass where you have reserved seating, and this is a brand new pass we introduced this year, is our Platinum Pass. And that's a much higher ticket or ticketed uh, pass option. Um, and, and that's for those who want to make it a donation comes with making that pass purchase to, to the festival. Um, but back to the VIP, I think that is where the real value um, lies in, in our past offering. So you get first access to the seats. And then, um, as I mentioned before, all of these new events that we've brought to this year's festival, including the Q&A um, with Alan Ruff on stage, that's included uh, in the past. And then you have parties. It's, it's really about the parties. when you I'm go glad to the, you brought that up. A film festival. So there's a Thursday night fr- party, a Friday night, a Saturday night party, and then we round everything off Sunday with the most fantastic VIP brunch that starts in the uh, early uh, mid morning uh, parts of, of Sunday, and that's at the NVO uh, rooftop restaurant here in Portsmouth, which the views are spectacular. Last year's array of food was just off the charts. So if you've been, um, you know, doing a lot of the films during the day and you've been doing the parties at night, you you definitely need to swing by the VIP brunch and fill up on some sustenance to get you through the rest of the day. Um, but that's part of the, the whole package, the VIP pass. You know, and if you just bought the Sunday one, it's only $50. That's right. But that won't get you into the VIP brunch. That's the only thing you need to know about that. So the VIP brunch is just for those people who have bought the VIP pass holders. And again, for New Hampshire residents, we've knocked off um, a, a good chunk of money on that VIP pass if you show your proof of being a New Hampshire resident. So from any parts of the state, we welcome we welcome uh, anybody to come down and spend the weekend with us in Portsmouth. That's crazy. I mean, in, uh, are there... Are they limited in number? Are there only so many you can get of each one, or or? I don't. Right now, we're not anticipating any capacity issues, Ray. So I I, I don't have a cap um, yet. But that's a problem. I hope we have in future years. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, so the thing with Alan Ruck. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that, how that, it's a Q&A kind of, right? For Yes, you know. and we just recently confirmed that Rebecca Lavoy uh, from New Hampshire Public Radio will be on stage with Alan having a, a retrospective conversation with him about his career, right? So it's it's taking him back to his early days and, you know, what got him started? Why did he choose his, his career in in uh, film and 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 what has that what does that journey looked like for him? Um, and we're, I'm sure it's going to be full of laughs. It's going to be full of maybe a bit of intrigue about you know what what it's been like maybe staying in relationship with people like Matthew Broderick you know through, right. throughout the, the decades. Uh, how do you maintain relationships and? What is it like to be, you know, as part of the the Secession HBO series today that has just um, uh, just reached so many households and has just gotten such notoriety on the the award circuit? So we're excited to see what he brings to to stage. But we've we've looked at him in other conversations that you know we can see online, and he seems to be just 
funny, lovely, jovial. Like it, it, it's going to be just a fun, you know, 50 to 60 minutes of conversation with him. And there'll probably be a little bit of audience Q&A as well at yeah. the end. Oh, man. I fell in love with, excuse me, Succession. It Whoa, that was a crazy, crazy show. Um, Same. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I did too. He's going to drop some nuggets. If anybody, if you even have an inkling that you might want to go and listen to him, I, I, I guarantee he'll drop nuggets of information. The, um, the, on the schedule, um, there's a lot, thankfully, of uh, uh, workshops for New Hampshire-based um, topics. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them. I mean, there's crazy stuff there, too, like, you know, stunt. How, <laughs> the world of stunts. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this one we're, we're pretty excited about. This has been um, a workshop that what I hear from, from uh, Dan and Ian and our, our veteran festival organizers, they've been wanting to do this stunt workshop with Amy Green for years. Amy is um, a Portsmouth, New Hampshire resident, along with her husband, Chris Jensen. They were the line producers for the movie The Holdovers um, that has won awards and has um, gotten so much uh, uh, good press here in, in our region because, you know, it's, it's set in a New England um, uh, prep school community. So Amy uh, works, in, you know, in, in, the, in the field of doing actual stunts. Right, so yeah. she's a uh, uh, she, she does stunts herself, and she's been wanting to bring the kind of hands-on workshop uh, to the festival for years. And we finally found a, this weekend she she is available, meaning she's not working on set, you know, someplace around the world. Uh, so that workshop is is Saturday uh, at the press room. I have a feeling that that one is going to go very quickly. That's yeah. ten a.m. Saturday morning. I am so excited to see what what Amy does in that hour and a half that she'll have to to demonstrate some some moves. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, talk about nuggets, right? I mean, on yeah. the website it says hear about planning and executing a car chase, choreographing a fight, finding light and camera angles, pre visual visualization. Come on, it's well worth it. Drop the money, folks. Hang on, we gotta take another break. Oh my god, we, we got one block to go! I cannot believe it. Tina Sottown, the executive director of the Music Hall in Portsmouth, is talking all things New Hampshire Film Festival with us. Lucky listeners here at NH Unscripted, I am your host, Ray Dudley. You are listening to us 1450 AM, 103.9 FM, and 101.9 FM for the beautiful soul of Manchester. We love you down there. NH.radio.com is our URL. And believe it or not, we're just scratching the surface, but hey, it's all we can get away with. We'll be right back. Welcome back to NH Unscripted, where we are laying a little of it on you. Yes, yes, yes. I am your Robin McNamara-like host, Ray Dudley, and we are coming to you from the YMCA-like conditions of the WKXL Studios in Concord. I can smell the pool chlorine from here. You are listening to us, 1450 AM or 103.9 FM in Concord. 101.9 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester. NHTalkRadio.com is our URL, and let me park right there for a second. If you go out to NHTalkRadio.com, you can find archives of not only our show, but all the other quality program that takes place here at WKXL. There's also a Listen Live button. Huh? Huh? That's gold right there. Listen Live. You can hear this show every Wednesday and Friday morning at 9 a.m., but if you listen live, there's a lot of other stuff going on out there as well. Tina Sautel is talking with us today about the New Hampshire Film Festival. Tina, before we go too far, can you please give out the contact information one more time? Yes, you can find all the information, including ways to buy passes for New Hampshire Film Festival at NH. Filmfestival.com. Perfect, perfect. You have a special block that takes place on the last day, 
And um, why don't you talk to us about your special guest and why that block now exists? Oh, yes, I would love to. So we're, we're seeing more and more in the film industry all of these anniversary celebrations that are happening for classic films. And this year we had the opportunity to um, work with Judge Reinhold from Beverly Hills Cops in doing a 40th anniversary uh, celebration tour of the film. Uh, they just came up with Beverly Hills Cop 4. And so Judge is, is, has been on tour uh, bringing back the original Beverly Hills Cop film, having a conversation with people on stage uh, before he uh, the, the screening happens. Uh, Judge is just a wonderful um, a person and comedian uh, and is so excited to also be joining us uh, for a good chunk of the festival this weekend. We understand he's going to be in town not just for Sunday, but earlier in the weekend. Uh, so that's our new capstone to this year's film festival. It's fun. You know, it celebrates. Um, filmmaking as it was done 40 years ago. Imagine what has changed, right? Oh, In yeah. the, the four decades of making film. Yep, it's unbelievable. The technology involved, I mean, it's exactly. it's, it's crazy. So that block, it's the last block of the, of the whole festival. It looks like it's about two and a half hours long, like 7.30 to 10, if I got that right. Right. It, it'll kick off with a uh, judge introducing the film and talking about the history of, you know, going through four four different, um, you know, films uh, being made and, and, and a series of, of films for Beverly Hills Cop, working with, with Eddie Murphy and, and that sort of thing. Um, and so it is a good chunk of time, but it's going to be fun, and it's just going to be such a relaxing way for everybody to, to end the weekend in this uh, very celebratory way, uh, having it, the film celebrating its 40th anniversary. The one thing I do want to mention that is just before that, um, part of the New Hampshire Film Festival is the Young Filmmakers Workshop, and that's for high school kids who um, embark on this immersive experience of creating, shooting, directing, editing a film over the course of the weekend, and they get to present their film at the very end of the New Hampshire Film Festival. And that happens just before Judge Reinhold and the Beverly Hills Cop screening happens on stage at the Historic Theater. So I wanted to make sure we drew attention to that, because this is our commitment to educating uh, the future filmmakers uh, of the world. So they're getting to show their films? Yes, they get to show their films. And these are shorts, so it really is in keeping with that whole aspect of the New Hampshire Film Festival, that these are, sh- are short films, so they're, they're, they're you know generally a couple minutes long. Um, but they are instructed by John Herman, who has been doing this for decades for for the film festival. And it truly is an immersive experience where they get to go from A to Z in the entire filmmaking process over just a few short days and have their film ultimately presented at the, at the very end of the festival. Wow, I bet they're proud. they got to be excited. It's very cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially because... If, if they even show up just for that day, there's so many chances of learning of learning so much about the industry. Exactly. It, it's yeah. wild. Yeah. Um, I did want to just name some other blocks. Oh, <laughs> I, I want to hammer again. Get a VIP pass. It's well worth every <laughs> dollar. I mean, the Q&As, the after parties, and there are several after parties happening, right? There are several. Every night, there uh-huh. is an after party. Uh-huh, yes. uh-huh. And wonder what goes on there. Woo, get a VIP pass. You could be <laughs> one of the people that uh, things are happening for. There are wonderful things that are taking place, like insider industries, uh, uh, industry insiders, getting films to an audience. There's one block. Growing mm-hmm. the film industry in New Hampshire. There's another block. You've got award ceremonies. Van McLeod Award. That's yes. no kidding. Ben has been, uh, he was a staple in New Hampshire for so, so long. He sure was. And um, we're so pleased to have Ben's uh, wife presenting this year's award once again. Um, we choose to honor somebody who is coming from uh, the state of New Hampshire and uh, will be uh, announcing. I'll, I'll let Dan Hannon, who I know who's going to be coming back onto your show, yep. Uh to speak about that, so I won't steal Dan's thunder there. 
but yeah, the Van McLeod Award is 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 one of the hallmark events in closing out the festival. Man, it's so rich. the the uh, the whole The whole menu is so rich. You cannot. It's hard to get your head around what's actually happening out there. For for almost, I mean, it's pennies on the dollar. Let, let's face it. For for the money that a person would pay for even just a day pass, you you come away just so enriched, so enriched. It's a steal. It's an absolute steal. So we we hope people will take a hard look at it. And again, we would so love to have people join us for all four days. Um, but even if you can only come for a day, come on down to, to Portsmouth and uh, see what's going on in town. As you've mentioned before, Ray, it's a total walkable festival, which w- is one of the things that patrons and ticket buyers from the past have, have let us know that they love the fact that you can get to all of the screening venues uh, with ease just through walking. So you don't have to park your car and get back in it and drive right. around town. Right. It's all walkable. And you so and you get to see part of the cities that you the city that you might never have even known existed. You know, as you get to tour it, it's really wonderful. Tour There's, it and experience our awesome restaurants that we have here in downtown Portsmouth. And the restaurants they are ready; they will be fully staffed and ready for for the festival. So uh, they'll be ready to serve you and just be so thrilled uh, for anybody new that has never ventured into Portsmouth. We welcome you. I'll be honest; I'm a flatbread pizza lover. Oh, same. <laughs> <laughs> you see me, you'll know without a without a doubt that I love to go there. There's another. Uh, there's an actual workshop morning chat with 2024 New Hampshire Film Festival filmmakers. I have got to think that that would be just something that you, a, a film a, a future filmmaker might want to just sit in on and listen. Beca- Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, Ian's going to come on your show and talk about that as well. And as we're assembling all of the filmmakers um, whose films have been selected, um, they're making decisions on their travel plans and and what day they're going to be arriving for the festival. So we haven't uh, officially announced which filmmakers will be making up the panel for that 10 a.m. Friday event. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be a stellar lineup of people based on um, those who have indicated um, that they're they're coming to the festival and and very excited uh, to to be at the festival and talk with the audience and the community about the process of making their film and in their careers that they've had thus far. Um, We yes. We didn't quite. I didn't uh, get into like the uh, the jury pool, the the adjudication. Do you want to touch on that? Are, are films being adjudicated? They are. Yes, we have a whole um, awards component uh, to to the festival, and those awards are um, identified through a juried process. And so we're looking. You know, we look. We actually it took us easily six months, in some cases eight months, to construct this. Um, the, these uh, juried members uh, of the awards committee. Dan Hannon is going to be on your show and can speak about that at length because he leads that process for us. Um, but these are, these are individuals who are screen playwriters themselves or they've, they've produced films or they're directors. Um, so they know what they're talking about and they know what they're looking for in terms of quality and award, uh, award material. Tina, please, one more time, the URL website. NewHampshireFilmFestival.com Four days, 100 plus films, 22 years of storytelling, the New Hampshire Film Festival. Tina Sotel, Executive Director of the Music Hall, has been our guest. Thank you so much, Tina. You've Thank been... you, Ray. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. You've been listening to NH Unscripted. I am your host with the pajamas on, Ray Dudley. You have been listening to us at 1450 AM, 103.9 FM in Concord, and 101.9 FM for the beautiful souls in Manchester. Or maybe you were out at the URL, nhtalkradio.com. We'll catch you on the next one.